everyone, it's Alpine here. For this podcast, we were about to record and then my internet dropped out. So I was having to use my phone microphone and so my audio isn't as good as it could be. But I can assure you for future episodes of the podcast, for anything else we do Vortex related or just anything in general, my mic will be much better. So just a quick disclaimer. So yeah, back to the podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of the Vortex Podcast. Let's start with some introductions from our team. So my name is Alpine, you can find me on YouTube at Alpine Does FNAF or just Alpine. So I make videos on a variety of FNAF content. This goes all the way from theories to gameplay to cooking. I work on many projects and at the minute I am currently working on my game and book series Alpine's Arcade, which you can find on GameJob. Hello, I am JS or JS Productions on a variety of platforms. For YouTube, you can find me at JS Productions 02 is my at, but it's just going to be JS Productions. My Twitter is the same thing, JS Productions 02. My TikTok is at JS Productions TV. Primarily, I focus on FNAF, but occasionally I do other stuff as well. A project that I have is a personal podcast that I'm making. It's pretty much going to be variety from media, such as films, gaming, TV, books, pretty much anything you name it. I am a freak for books. That's all I got to say. Howdy. My name is Dale. All my ads are Wendadeo or some form of that. I make... A variety of content, mainly streaming, games, horror on Twitch. I also plan to do a lot of video essays on my YouTube channel. And I have two projects I'm working on. Tories is my upcoming FNAF fan game. And the podcast to go along with it, explaining um, the process of making one. Hello, I am Link Ash. Um, you can literally only find me on youtube because i have nothing else i make theories gameplay currently i am only working on just like one video that's just like an introduction to my channel because my old one was horrible hi i'm phasmax but you can call me max i'm on youtube and tiktok both of my usernames are phasmax and i make general fnaf content from showing my cosplays to playing fan games and i use any pronouns so also on the Vortex admin team, we have Leo PGB and Just Costi. Sadly, they couldn't be with us for this opening episode, but we did want to just give them a quick mention. They both stream on YouTube and Twitch and both have a Twitter account as well. They're both really great guys, so I really do encourage that you go and support their stuff. Costi also works on games and Leo also likes to work on films. So Vortex is a group of FNAF creators founded by us, the Magic 7, and we aim to make a difference within the FNAF community. This ranges all the way from hosting charity and not-for-profit events, all the way to giving creators a platform. Our sole aim is to bind the FNAF community together and make a more positive and safe space. So for me, what I see from Vortex is a real opportunity to shape the community like we were never able to before. I believe that as a group, we can define a whole new generation of FNAF YouTubers. Far too many times we have seen negativity within the FNAF community and we really want to bring something positive to the table. So what we can see from this community is that we are going to aim to make sure this community grows stronger than ever and share our love of FNAF and grow the creators inside of the community and unite as one. I really hope to see from this group um, the community to really grow rather than fall back like I have personally seen in the past couple years and that we can raise money for charity and do all these events just, just to do them out of the goodness of our hearts. In my opinion, this group is a great way to give back to the community and each other, and I'm hoping we can inspire other creators and help others grow. So, 
As some of our creators mentioned there, we are going to be hosting a lot of charity events. Now, previously we had the 2023 FNAF Creators Charity Stream for St. Jude, in which we raised $5,000 for charity. This event was pretty much the birth of Vortex and where we were able to establish an idea that we can take further into becoming a actual group. So looking into future prospects, we're going to be helping out with Mr. Doggo's charity stream. Now, after the St. Jude's Creators charity stream, Doggo decided to make his own and he was a creator within that stream. And this is all oriented around Teco, which is a charity that fights poverty in Mexico. So in December, we are going to be using Mr. Doggo's channel to help raise money for those that need it most. And whilst not being the sole organisers of this event, a lot of our streamers and a lot of our people within the admin team are going to be taking a part. So it has our full support. Furthermore, we will be hosting another event and this is a collaboration with Powerline Studios, the creators of the glitched attraction. Whilst I can't spread much information on the event just yet, just know that there will be updates within our Twitter and YouTube pages, and especially our Discord. And the final event is the FNAF Creators Charity Stream for St. Jude 2024. Whilst we don't even know how this is going to work yet, we do know that it will definitely go ahead and you can expect something very similar next year. All of these upcoming events are going to be streamed on the Vortex channel. Now, this is on YouTube and also Deo is going to talk to you in a minute about setting up the Twitch channel and Max is going to speak to you about the TikTok. So for our first batch of Vortex streamers, I'll be announcing as a triple package Poison, Kino and Reactive. Three of our creators from the charity stream. You may remember a certain Reactive. So now I want to speak to you a bit about our social media platforms. So the first platform that we have is Vortex FNAF on YouTube. This is where we're going to be doing most of our lab work as well as help promoting any charity events. As of this recording, we don't have a Twitch yet, but we are currently working on making one, which I may run. We have no handle, we have no nothing yet, but uh, we will update on Twitter or whatever to let you guys know whenever we have it up. For our TikTok, we're hoping to post various types of things collaborating with one another, such as funny clips, theories, and posting about future charity events, and hopefully more. The username is FNAF Vortex, and I'm one of two managers who mainly run the account, the other one being JS. As what Max has mentioned, I am also one of the other managers of that TikTok account. So as you may know, we have a Discord server and Discord is a great place to chill and chat with your favorite creators and hang out with us. It's also a great platform for you to stay in the know with what we have to offer, our future events and just kind of where we are as an organization. We also have a Twitter account at FNAF underscore Vortex and you can follow us on there for even more updates. So next up, we're going to talk a bit about the FNAF movie and actually talk about some FNAF. So let's talk about the FNAF movie. Now, the FNAF movie is coming out very soon. So first of all, let's talk about trailer one, which was released way back in May and was 47 seconds long. So how did you guys feel about the first trailer? It was... It didn't show too much. But it got the point across of what we um, expect to see. At least what we knew at the time. I feel like they didn't really have to show much, but that was the whole point. It was so powerful. They got across really the vibe of the movie um, and captured so much in so little time that it built up so much hype. And as you said off recording about how may was just the the big month for fnaf we got the ruin trailer we got a bunch of other stuff and 
and yeah, also this trailer being one of them. So, yeah. It also uh, real Help Wanted Two at that time, I think. Yes, yes, yes. The yeah. So one of the big things about the first trailer was the red eyes. Now, how does everyone feel about these red eyes? Do we think that they're going to be in the final movie? Do they think that that perhaps these were a placeholder? Um, or do we think they're the final ones? But are we feeling good? Are we feeling bad about them? Because I'm going to say I wasn't feeling too good about them, but they're growing on me. They're growing on me. I I'm starting to like them. So let's get your guys' thoughts on that. Yeah, I've definitely grown on the red eyes for sure. At first, I'm like, oh, this is cool. Then, like, I started seeing, all, like, the backlash from people, like, specifically on Twitter. Um, bad place to look at <laughs> that stuff. Um, um, for it, it, it really, at first, like, was making me, wow, I guess I shouldn't like the red eyes. But over time, I've come to like it because, like, it's literally something new in this franchise that we never had and yes i do know we've had the you know the white pupils which is cool but i feel like with the red eyes it shows kind of a i guess an angry mode to the animatronics but i think it could be a possibility that they could have the white pupils to show yes you know they are possessed and stuff but you know, it, it could happen either way um, for that, but I think the red eyes are fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Jay has said, the red eyes are completely fine in my opinion. If they are in the final movie, no biggie. If they are, like, who cares? I think that, well, like how Twitter's mentioned, it was a giant and utter overreaction to the red eyes i think that honestly they look pretty cool also they had red eyes in the silver eyes trilogy books mm -hmm. so just putting that on the film i think is another little cool nod to you know the silver eyes i think a teaser in fnaf ar and in some instance oh yeah in a uh, help one and one um doing the freddy like the repair freddy mode he had red eyes. So... Yeah, like... And I feel like we're going to see these red eyes a lot more. Um, especially if you remember the Ruin teaser. There was, a, there was some mysterious red eyes. Mm. Whose red eyes were they? That's a great question. I think it was a mimic. Uh, no? Yeah, it could have been a mimic. Yeah. It, been. it probably was. Anyways, there's red eyes in this franchise. <laughs> deal with it i never really had an issue with them to begin with but i was a bit let down when i saw the people's reactions to the red eyes i mean i thought it was kind of cool and stuff and i still do but yeah so on june 27th we got trailer two lasting two minutes and 26 seconds the longest of all of the trailers this featured a first look at vanessa spring bonnie hanks group and corey kenshin how do we feel about YouTube cameos in the FNAF movie? I don't think it's a bad thing that they're in the movie, but if it's overdone, like, if it's... It doesn't seem like it's the main part, but if it is, like, a main point, then I think it'll really drag away. But with, like, the employee posters where it's just, like, little pictures and little nods to those, I think that's fine. And Corey being a taxi driver, like... It doesn't, from the trailers, it doesn't seem like he's a major character. So just little, little things like that, if they were just YouTubers, I think that would be great. Of course, not the entire movie, but maybe some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe like some minutes and stuff, but like not a lot. Yeah. Like Markiplier, like where's Markiplier at? We know he's in it. He, there's no way he's not. <laughs> well, he thinks Lobas and Bates are him, so... <laughs> <laughs> to be honest i was really happy about cory being in the movie because i've watched him for six years now uh but yeah i kind of agree with what dio said um but yeah i am fine with youtubers in it if they don't 
really, 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 really interfere in the story. If it's focused on William Afton, uh, Mike and his sister, and basically from that plot point, then that's fine. As long as they don't, like, interfere with, like, the, um, the Mystic Children stuff or something like that. But, um, like what Deo said, Corey Kenshin is absolutely fine. And then the images on the wall of the YouTubers are fine. Because it gives them, like, a little shout-out for their contribution to the franchise. Um, but as long as they don't give, like, a interfering moment with, like, you know, for example, I, I don't even know if they're going to show the Bite of 83 or Bite of 87. I don't know which one. As long as it doesn't interfere with that, then that's fine, you know? Hopefully that doesn't sound, like, too harsh in a way, but, yeah. Yeah. The Bite of 87, but Markiplier cosplaying as the crying child. <laughs> <laughs> what would be cool is if they give, if that actually just happened, like, the Bite of 83 or whatever in the movie, and if Fredbear had like a voice before and before it happens, it's Markiplier. Like that would the be the perfect cameo for him. <laughs> <laughs> so within Trailer 2, we got a look at our boy Spring Bonnie. And although some people think it's Spring Trap, it's, you know, it's Afton. One of the scenes shows Mike looking back and screaming, which a few days ago, a Spanish version of the trailer was released and instead of looking back and screaming at Afton, he was actually screaming at Foxy running down the hall. If this switch is true, do we believe that Spring Bonnie will get enough screen time as being let on? Do you believe that they are going to be simply in some sort of end credits scene or have a smaller part to play in the lore than we actually expected? And this is going to be more on William Afton than the Spring Bonnie costume. How do we feel about Spring Bonnie in the movie? Do we think they will get enough screen time? I personally think that they are definitely going to get him a lot of screen, screen time. Um, I'm kind of thinking of this as like a... I know this is definitely not a FNAF related movie, but in Empire Strikes Back, Vader was only given like 10 minutes of screen time from what I remember. It could be more than that, it could be less than that, I don't remember, but as l I think if his presence is looming, kind of like what Darth Vader had in The Empire Strikes Back, then I think that's going to be really, really good. And if a character doesn't get a lot of spring, spring time? <laughs> if the character doesn't get a lot of screen time, but their presence are looming, then I think that's going to be really good. I mean, this is another, I guess, thing about the Silver Eyes. In that book, really, like, Afton didn't come in until the end, and I think that's, like, how the movie's going to play out. Not, like, in an end credits, but, like, more to the back half. Like, William will be, like, a central focus. He will be mainly in the plot. Maybe not much focus, but, like, he will be, he will be there. Like, it will be a, like an overarching thing and then at the end it just like i like to use the term explodes and he just comes out in the spring bonnie suit and that's just the final act of the movie uh i feel like spring bonnie will be at the end and i'm assuming it might be some sort of cliffhanger but yeah that's all i can really guess based off of what we've seen so after that we got the final trailer lasting two minutes and one second. And this was released on the 30th of August. The final trailer didn't really give us much new content. However, it did expand on the footage from the first two trailers. We learned a lot more about the characters and a lot more about what's going to happen in this movie. So now that we have seen all of the trailers, what do we believe is going to happen? I think William, like I said, won't be an overwhelming presence, but definitely, like, a presence known. That, I worded that weird. I hope that makes sense. Um, but throughout the movie, I think it will drop little hints of who he is and what happened. Mainly, probably through Vanessa, but I do think this movie will mainly be focused on the animatronics. 
and them going after Mike or as it says in the trailer after Abby yeah definitely with this I think my favorite part from this trailer was getting to see more of the break-in into the pizzeria from um, Hank and his gang um, and kind of seeing you know get the place all smashed up and destroyed but the highlight I think of the trailer was definitely seeing Carl or <laughs> I was saying Carl the cupcake I'm so, I'm so used to calling the cupcake Carl but um, the cupcake attacking <laughs> attacking the character Carl which um, I saw a lot of people were um, saying it's literally ironic that Carl is being attacked by the cupcake which by fans is named Carl. As JS said, like, just the fact that it kind of started off with everybody breaking into the pizzeria and, like, breaking everything, I was really confused. And I hope, you know, when we watch the movie, we get more clarity on why that was happening, because, like, I'm just really confused with that, but, yeah. Okay, so, I think that it will have a very happily ever after ending, but not for William Afton, because it will get springlocked. Oh no. So that is the end of the podcast. And oh, no, no, actually, no, no, I'm not saying that. It sounds like we're finishing <laughs> past the only uploading one episode. So that was the end of episode one of the Vortex podcast. Join us next time. We'll be covering some other aspects of Five Nights at Freddy's and the FNAF community. So from us at Vortex, peace, guys. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. And goodbye.